Today's project is going to be getting the internet from the main house to another building over on the property which is about 70 meters from here. A little bit too far to run an ethernet cable so I'm going to do it using a wireless bridge. So I've got my wireless bridge kit. I'm using the TP-Link EAP215s. They have a transmission range of about 5Ks line of sight. They come with PoE or power over ethernet adapters which is how they'll get powered. Also got a TP-Link router that I'll use as an access point over in the other building. A couple of antenna mounts and four sets of ethernet cables. I've got two short ones to run from the PoE connector to each router and then two longer ones of about 20 meters to run from the PoE connector to my bridge. One thing I like about the TP-Link bridge is each of these paddles works as its own access point and also extends your internet out as well so you can connect directly to each of the paddles and get internet that way without having a separate router as an access point. So before I install it where I want it I'm going to set it up on the table here and just make sure everything's working and talking to each other and then I'll go and install it where I want it. Now our home internet here is Starlink so I do have an extra step because we don't have an ethernet port by default on the Starlink router. So with the Starlink router you have to get an ethernet adapter which is just a short piece of cable. You pull out the cable from the dish to the router, plug the adapter in and then plug the dish back into the adapter and then you've got your ethernet port and we can go from there. If you don't have Starlink and you have a regular modem you would just plug your ethernet cable into any one of the LAN ports on the back of the modem. These are typically orange in colour or yellow. So the first step is to plug an ethernet cable into the router that is providing internet that you want to extend. So I've done that and this is the other end of that cable. I'm going to plug it into the PoE adapter where it says LAN. And then make sure that PoE adapter is plugged into power. Get another short section of ethernet cable, plug it in to the PoE adapter in the PoE port. Plug the other end of that into the back of the bridge where it says LAN1 PoE in and then you'll see lights come up on the bridge that it's powering up. So now that that's connected it should be putting out a Wi-Fi signal that you can connect to and the name of it is the SSID which is listed down near where that connection is. So if you go into your Wi-Fi settings it should show up. In this case it's showing up as TP-Link 5 gigahertz with combination and numbers there. Just want to tap and connect to that. And I forgot to mention, but you should download the Omada app, which is TP-Link's app for setting this up. The box came with QR codes and things like that to help you connect. So I've connected to the signal that that's putting out, gone into the Omada app. I'm going to tap standalone mode. I'm going to allow once for it to use my location. And then that bridge is showing up in the app. So then I can go through here. And I'm going to call this one house access point because this will be the bridge that's set up on the house. So we'll just call it house AP, create a password, accept the terms of use. Now you want to create a Wi-Fi name and password for the access point that this bridge is creating. So I'm just going to call it the same thing. I'm going to go house access point and password as well. So then I've got a summary of what my setup is and I can go next and it's just going to apply those settings. And now we're all set up, just click continue and there's a summary of the bridge setup. So now I've got my first bridge set up, it's time to plug the second bridge in. So another ethernet cable into the PoE power in, connect this to the other PoE adapter where it says PoE, plug that PoE adapter in and this is now powering on with lights on the side. I'll just give that a moment to boot up as well. Okay so the second bridge is now booted up and showing up as TP-Link there you can see my other access point and the default Starlink and once again that SSID is shown in here which is the name that will be showing here. So tap in the Wi-Fi settings to connect to it, head over to the Amada app, 
standalone. Just refresh that. Go into it. Set up the name and password for this one. I'm going to call this one Studio Access Point as it's going on the studio. Set up a password. Accept the terms of use. Now I'm going to set up the access point, which is the Wi-Fi network that this unit will be creating. I'm just going to call it the same thing. Studio AP. Create a password. Got a summary there. And just going to let that boot now. For all my passwords, I've just kept them all the same. So the same password for this, for that, and for the home internet, just to keep things simple. And just wait for that to reboot. All right, all set. So now the second bridge is set up. So it would have kicked me off the Wi-Fi network because I've created a new name and password. I can go into my settings if I connect to that. So in my settings, I'm now connected to this access point. So I've got internet coming in across the bridge and I'm now connected to this one. So a quick speed test just to connect that it's all working. And there we go, we're getting 90 odd megabits a second coming through our access point that'll be set up on the other building. So you could just leave it there. You could set up one of these paddles and just boost your internet out into your yard or set up both and have another access point Example, if you just had it out on your shed, you could just connect to that and that would probably work fine. I want to have an access point within the building. So I've got my second router. I'm now going to connect an ethernet cord from the PoE adapter into the LAN port. And this is on the studio side or on the side that didn't have the home internet connected. And then I'll just plug that ethernet cable into the WAN port of the router and then plug the router into my power board and wait for that to boot up. So once that's booted, it is just a matter of jumping onto your computer or on your phone, running through the setup that comes in the box for that. And we're gonna set this up as a access point, not as its own router. And all it's gonna do is just create a point that we can connect to in that other building and use the internet over there. So the first thing you want to do is connect to the Wi-Fi that the router is putting out. Then you want to go to tplinkwifi.net. Now if it asks you to log in, the default is usually admin for both the username and the password. It's just asked me to create a new password. And then once I'm in here, we can just go through the quick start. I want to set this up as an access point. You can set up the name. This is for the 2.4 gigahertz network. So I'm just going to call this one studio. Put a password in here. Then creating a name for the 5 gigahertz network. And a password for that one as well. Just going to leave the defaults for this and then click finish and just let it reboot. Now that that's rebooted, it's kicked me out because there's a new name and password. And then if I go into my Wi-Fi settings, I can then see those networks that I've set up. So there's studio. And then if I just enter that password that I created in here, should just be connecting and then I'm connected. Then if I want to get in there, I can just use that password that I've created. And there we've got our internet connection running through that router set up as an access point. So now that all this is working, I'll pop a bit of a diagram up so that makes a bit more sense. You can just see it all diagrammatically how it's connected. And now that that's all set up and running, we can install it where we want it. Look what I've found on the roof, a little python. So I do need to connect a ground cable here, which I don't have yet, so I'll have to come back and do that. But for now, I'm just gonna slide the cover on. 
So I've just opted to put this on the existing antenna cable rather than one of the mounts that I'd ordered. Just gives me a bit more height and it was a bit easier. So now I just want to make sure it's pointing to where I need to set the other one up, which is out kind of over those orange trees. May have to do a little bit of pruning, we'll see, but it typically will need line of sight. So I've just tidied up the cable there and just here I've put a drip loop in so any water that runs down will drip off there instead of continuing and running down the cable. So there's the first paddle mounted up there. Now all I've got to do is run the other end of that cable through the wall, which I'll do where the Starlink already runs through, plug it into the PoE, and then plug the PoE adapter into the router. And that's this side of the bridge set up. So we're about the second building now, and we're going to set up the second paddle. But even before we do that, I've still got two bars of Wi-Fi connection from that first paddle. And if I do a speed test, getting up around 70 megabits a second, which is pretty good, but I don't think it's going to work too well inside. So that's why we're going to set up the second paddle and the second router as an access point. And it's actually working quite well, even though we don't have clear line of sight, it's pretty obstructed with some trees. And I went for a little walk around the property as well. And there's probably one to two acres, including over at the shed, where we're getting really good internet connection, which is an added benefit that I wasn't planning on. So I just want to point this generally in line with the other one I've got set up. All right, we are all up and running. I did have to reset this paddle via the Omada app, which was pretty straightforward. Just in the settings there, hit reset, and then it did connect because it wasn't connecting the first time. And on a speed test connecting to the paddle, we're getting around 150 megabits a second, which is pretty good. And then connecting to the 5G of the router that is in the studio, we're getting about 70 to 80 megabits a second. So we're losing a bit there, probably because it's just a bit of a cheap router. Just got to tidy up my cables now with a few cable clips and run an earth, which I don't have the cable for that, or the cable clips. So I'm going to call it a day for now.